at some point in the future, like maybe five or six years from now, I think we'll be able to treat, achieve uh, true autonomous driving. You just mentioned something, sort of an inkling of a step towards full autonomy. Mm -hmm. What would you say are the biggest technological roadblocks to full self-driving? Um, I think at Tesla, we, we, I feel like we're very close to level five autonomy. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a business war brewing in the Silicon Valley. This business war is being fought between Uber and Tesla. Tesla versus Uber as one of the most interesting or compelling battles of 2025. We own Tesla because of the robots and we believe in the full self-driving. And we are turning autopilot and full self-driving. This gambit made Tesla one of the most valuable companies in the world. But I like Uber because it's diversified. They've got ride sharing, food delivery, they've got new products and AV market. You know, in 2019, Elon Musk made a bold promise. He said, I feel very confident predicting uh, autonomous robot taxis for Tesla next year. Mark my words, that no one needs to pay attention. Meaning you could go to sleep in your car, but next year for sure. But what followed next was just failure, failure, and failure. The lawsuit claims Elon Musk's company is misleading customers about the car's self-driving capabilities. One customer capturing footage of a left turn gone wrong, and others traveling in cars exceeding posted speed limits. Driver using the electric car maker's autopilot system died after crashing into a highway barrier last month. They crashed in the fire trucks, concrete barriers, parked cars. But finally, after six years of extensive work, Tesla finally unveiled the robo taxi in 2025. Tesla. 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 The car can do almost anything. Elon Musk revealing his next destination, the fully driverless Cybercab. Now, the moment this happened, Tesla's stock exploded by 10% in a single day. Why? Because Wall Street suddenly realized that something terrifying is happening in the American market. Robotaxi wasn't just a new product, Robotaxi can practically render Uber irrelevant. Look at this. Today in the US, an Uber costs about $2.5 per mile. But Elon Musk claims that once Tesla hits economies of scale, their Robotaxi will bring this cost down to just $0.2 to $0.4 per mile. So do you realize that is a 10x drop in prices? Whereas Uber, they have no cars, no chips, and no vertical integration. So amidst this existential crisis, Uber has partnered with the godfather of AI. In the future, there's some 50 million taxis around the world. It's going to be augmented by a whole bunch of robo-taxis. Today, we're announcing a partnership with Uber. So the question is, why is Uber partnering with NVIDIA today? How does it intend to beat Tesla with an app that Tesla can roll out in a quarter? And if they fail, will this be the end of Uber? Before we move on, I would like to thank OutSkill for supporting our content. People, I want you to be ahead in the AI curve. That is why I am inviting you to an exclusive two-day live AI training program, which is happening this weekend, Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. IST. Normally, this program is priced at 10,000 rupees, but you can attend this at no cost, all thanks to OutSkill. OutSkill is one of the rare AI-focused education platform, which is backed by some of the most influential AI founders and investors. And across these 16 hours of live interactive training, you will gain the skills 
To build your personal AI toolkit with 10 plus tools already transforming industries, you will learn to master prompt engineering so you can harness AI precisely. You will learn to automate repetitive tasks and analyze data without writing a single line of code. And you'll be able to create professional presentations using images and videos in minutes. Eventually, you will also learn to develop AI agents and tools that give you a competitive edge in this hyper competitive world. Over 1 lakh professionals from 40 plus countries have already attended this training because they understand that in the age of AI, staying unprepared isn't just a disadvantage, it is a risk. Whether you work in tech, policy, business or any field, this program is built for you. But remember, the seats are limited and they are filling up rapidly. So if you want to future-proof your career and understand how AI is shaping the world, this is your chance to take action. So click the link in the description, secure your spot and join the WhatsApp group to receive all updates. To understand why the industry is scared, you first need to understand the religion of autonomy. You see, for years, companies like Waymo and Cruise believed that to make a car drive itself, you needed superhuman sensors. You needed LiDAR sensors, radar sensors, ultrasonic sensors and even 3D maps of every street to make a car drive safely without a driver. This approach is called restricted autonomy. And when it was invented, it was a miracle for mankind. But the problem was that a sensor suit alone would cost you $75,000 per car. So for the same amount of money, you could practically buy a Tesla Model 3 twice. This is the reason why even though self-driving was invented, it was not accessible to the common man. But then came Tesla. Elon Musk said, wait a minute, humans can drive a car with just two eyes and a biological brain, right? So why can't I have a car that has two eyes and a goddamn brain? Sounds ridiculous, right? Well, that's what Elon does. In fact, the industry called it impossible. Experts said it was suicide. But as usual, Tesla did the unthinkable. They removed the radar, they removed the ultrasonic sensors, and they bet the entire company on a strategy called general autonomy. You know what they did? They deleted their code and built a new way of achieving self-driving. To give you context, for the last decade, every self-driving company, whether that was Waymo or Cruise, even Tesla for that matter, they did things logically. So they would tell the car, if traffic light equal to red, then stop. If pedestrian detected, then brake. If lane marking on left, then stay on right. In fact, Tesla alone had 300,000 lines of C++ code just defining these rules. Now, do you realize that's like writing a book with 6,000 pages? But here's the problem that nobody saw coming. What happens when a construction worker waves at you through a red light? The code will tell you red light equal to stop, but the human says, go ahead. And this is where the robot stops. It panics because it doesn't know what to do. Why? Because the real world, it doesn't always follow rules. It's messy, unpredictable, and full of exceptions. But in 2024, Tesla did something that shocked the engineers all across the world. You know what they did? They deleted all 300 lines of code and replaced it with a chat GPT type model. Let me explain. Did you know, nobody sat down and taught grammar rules to chat GPT. Nobody coded put adjectives before nouns or verbs come after subjects. All they did was feed billions of sentences and said, chat GPT predict the next word. So by reading enough, by reading billions of pages, chat GPT learned language not through rules, but through pattern recognition. And Tesla is doing the exact same thing, but for driving. Tesla collects video from 6 million cars driving billions of miles. And then they show the AI a scenario. For example, they would show the car a stop sign and tell the algorithm, Tesla, watch what the human did and copy it. That's it. No rules, no programming. Just one command. Copy the human. And you know what? The world was shocked to know that it worked like a miracle. It worked so well that Tesla could now use $2,000 camera systems while others needed $40,000 LiDAR systems. Look at this. While Waymo has 29 cameras, 6 radars and 5 LiDAR sensors, Tesla only has 8 cameras. That's it. That is how Tesla got the world hooked on self-driving cars. Anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. And in cars, it's friggin' stupid. A major step forward for self-driving taxis, Tesla has rolled out its robo-taxis. 
They've got 28 cameras, they've got LiDAR and radar. Why do you feel that that is going to be the equivalent in terms of safety profile? Expensive sensors that are, are unnecessary. It's like having a whole bunch of expensive appendices. But here's where it's an economic time bomb. You see, right now, if you book an Uber in the US, you are paying roughly $2.5 per mile. Now, where does that money go? 70 to 75% of it goes to the human driver and 25 to 30% goes to Uber. Now, this 75%, that is Uber's biggest problem. They cannot lower these prices because the human needs to eat. But if Tesla pulls off general autonomy, they can delete the human and bring down the cost per mile to 0.25 to 0.4 dollars per mile. That's a 70 to 80 percent less cost than what Uber is charging right now and that too at scale. And this is a nightmare for two types of companies. Firstly, for Uber, Lyft and all ride-hailing companies, it's a disaster because Tesla will undercut Uber by 70 to 80 percent. And even if they charge 0.5 dollars per mile, they can undercut Uber by roughly 70 percent and still make a massive profit. Secondly, for car companies like Ford and GM, it is even worse because their entire business depends on you buying a car that sits in your parking for 95% of the time. It is inefficient, but it is profitable for the automobile giants. But if one car can do the work of 10 cars, can you imagine global annual car sales could theoretically crash from 80 million units to 10 to 20 million units. And in a world where robo taxis will cost $0.25 per mile, do you realize buying a car makes no financial sense? So why would you spend $40,000 on a car plus insurance plus gas when you can summon a robot for cheaper than a bus ticket? If this happens, the demand for private cars might collapse. So Tesla isn't trying to build a better car. They are trying to demonize the entire transportation industry. This is Tesla's formidable position on paper. I repeat, on paper. They have the car, they have the tech, and they have data from 6 million cars. And most importantly, they have economies of scale with $7 billion in profits. So the question is, what the hell is Uber going to do to cope up with this danger? And more importantly, why isn't an alphabet startup like Waymo quickly deploying Tesla's general autonomy technology to then beat Tesla? Well, Uber identified Tesla's biggest weakness, guys. And this is where the story gets very, very interesting. In fact, this is a weakness that is so useful that Tesla's robot taxis may be banned before even they launch. This is what Tesla's AI experts call the black box problem. Do you remember how the Tesla algorithm got smarter? The algorithm of Tesla learns by itself with the data that you feed them. But the problem is that if it learns on its own, nobody, not even the engineers who built it, can tell you exactly why it made a specific decision. So if a Tesla robot taxi crashes, you can't look at the code and say, ah, line 402 was the problem. So, you know, let's just correct it. You can't do that. You just have to shrug and say, I don't know why that happened. Yes. That is a big, big problem. And you know what? Regulators absolutely hate uncertainty. So even though the robot taxi looks absolutely promising on paper, Tesla is one bad software away from being banned from the face of Earth. Imagine it is 2027, you are the mayor of New York City, and suddenly at 6 p.m. on a Tuesday, a glitch in the neural network causes 200 Teslas to crash simultaneously all across Manhattan. 300 people are dead, the media is screaming for answers, families are crying for justice, and CNN is live at your office. And imagine Elon shrugging his shoulders and saying, we have no idea, Mr. Mayor. As the mayor of New York City, how will you feel? How will you face the public? That will be the end of your career. Because in politics, you can survive a strategy if you can explain it and blame it on a terrorist. But you cannot tell the public why they died. The public will burn your city down. And that, my dear friends, is the black box risk. So even though the robot taxis look promising, a few mess ups here and there and the governments will ban robot taxis from entering the market. And I just hope that Elon finds a way around these regulations. But if you look at Waymo's tech, Waymo recently opened its books to Swissray, which is one of the world's largest insurance companies. They analyzed over 25 million miles of driverless data. And here's what they found. Compared to a human driver, 
the Waymo computer had 88% fewer property damage claims and 92% fewer bodily injury claims in their initial study period. And why is it so safe? Because the robot doesn't get tired, it doesn't text, it doesn't get road rage, and it drives like an 80-year-old boring grandmother. It stops at every yellow light, it waits for 3 seconds at a stop sign, and it never speeds. This is the tech that Google built. But you know what? Uber cannot be dependent only on Waymo, right? Uber is a platform. It needs to have millions of cars competing for demand. This is the reason why in October 2025, Uber and Nvidia formed an alliance. An alliance which may give rise to the greatest rivalry in driverless cars. And you know what? They can actually do it without facing the black box problem. The question is, how? You see, Uber's problem is that they need millions of robo-taxis, but only Waymo knows how to build them and Uber cannot just depend on Waymo, right? Secondly, NVIDIA's problem is that they have the chip, but they don't have enough real-world driving data to train it to be as good as Tesla. And companies like Ford, well, they are great at building traditional cars, but it will take them another 5-10 to 10 years to build a self-driving car like Tesla. So here's the solution that they came up with. In this deal, Uber agreed to hand over 3 million hours of real-world driving data to NVIDIA. All this data is being fed to NVIDIA's supercomputer with the messy, chaotic reality of real-world traffic so that NVIDIA can train its brain without needing a fleet of its own cars. NVIDIA will use this data to build a super brain and NVIDIA will give that super brain to companies like Stellantis and BYD. Eventually, these car companies will build the car and put them on Uber. And the result? Uber gets exactly what it wants. A flood of cheap robot taxis from 10 different manufacturers so that they never have to bow down to Tesla or Waymo. So Uber doesn't care who builds the best robot. If Waymo builds the best robot, great, put it on Uber. If BYD builds a cheaper robot in China, great, put it on Uber. If Mercedes builds a luxury robot, great, put it on Uber. This is how Uber wants to protect itself from the biggest risk in the industry, which is picking the wrong horse and betting on it for 10 long years. At the same time, if it doesn't, the boring alliance tech will win. In fact, Uber is now dismantling its own identity to form a new one. You see, for 15 years, Uber's identity was, we are the gig economy, we give jobs to drivers. But now, they're slowly tearing that apart. Now, they want to be the Amazon of driverless cars. But the good thing is, whether Uber wins or Tesla wins, you will soon be riding in a car that has no driver. And your grandchildren will look at manual cars like we look at horses. And I'm just hoping that it is a future with more opportunities and not joblessness and recession. This is the story of the business war between Uber and Tesla. Now you tell me what you learned from this case study. That's all from my side for today guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.